Hey there, and welcome back to South Park The Stick of Truth. My name is Pete, and today we complete the O Canada quest as we travel up north. In the last episode, we tried to recruit the girls to our side, but to finally win them to our cause, we still need to translate a document, a document that is supposedly written in French. And that is why we need to travel to Canada today, but before we can leave South Park, we need to acquire a passport. And to get one, our first stop of the episode is the photo dojo. Hi, here to get your passport photo taken? Just head into the room there and we'll get started. Step between the lights, please. Okay, now before we have a picture taken, we want to head over to the right here for a few goodies. And afterwards, we can then step in front of the green screen. That's great. Okay, smile. Oh, do you have anything else you could wear? Could you try something else on? And we have no other choice here but to follow the photographer's requests. Uh, no, tell you what, how about just no shirt at all? Let's try that. Yeah, that's gonna work better. Here we go. Oh, those pants don't work with the lighting. Could you roll up your pants or, you know what, just take, take the pants off too. Okay, that's good. Really nice. Yes, very nice. How about we lose the underwear? You sick son of a bitch! Stop him! You'll never take me alive! This looks like a job for the Grand Wizard and his trusty sidekick. Alright, first fight of the episode as we're taking on the pedophile photographer. And this fight reminds me that I made a small mistake in the last episode concerning the Ass of Fire achievement, as only kills using Cartman's burning cloud ability count towards that. So using the curse ability like we do here does not count towards the achievement, so we have to lower the counter for that achievement from 11 ass kills down to 10. Wow, good job, kid. You're quite the fighter. All right, let's get this over with. Say cheese. Congrats, kid. You have your first passport. Now off screen I quickly did a quick outfit overhaul. We are now wearing pieces of the Khan armor, probably the best armor we have at this point, while at the same time still focusing heavily on power point regeneration. Out of the photo dojo we can then return to the fast travel flag, where we can immediately get two more kills against a group of Nazi zombies. And I will fast things forward here because the fight isn't too exciting. A sling of David and the burning cloud from Cartman take care of the enemies. <laughs> and we earn ourselves a few experience points, a bit of loot and two more kills for the Ass of Fire achievement. With the fast travel flag we then want to head to the southeast end of town near Kenny's house, from where, for the first time in this playthrough, we will make our way into the Lost Forest. For the rats here, we need to use the dragon shout, otherwise they won't allow us to pass. Jesus, you smell. Your insides are rotten, bruh. But once they're out of the way, we can head inside the forest. Now, inside the forest, we want to go right, up, right, down and right again. How do we know that? Well, way back in episode 5, we made a quick stop in Stan's room. And on the floor, we saw this piece of paper, which you can see on the screen right now. And the arrows at the bottom are, unsurprisingly, right, up, right, down, right. So, let's follow those instructions and see where that leads us. Look at this, y'all. A new kid's coming to the forest to have a soul save. Yay! If you want your soul saved, all you got to do is accept the one true lord as your personal savior and renounce all others as false idols. And yes, we want to accept the true lord to gain all of these lovely little animals as our friends. You're saved! Praise be to Satan, your new dread master. Now we can all be friends on Facebook. Yay! Hail Satan! Alright, we just gained 12 new friends, pushing the total up to 92, and also unlocking another perk. And we're going with Pyromaniac this time, a perk that increases the damage we deal to burning enemies, and especially with Cartman as a buddy, there will be quite a few of those. Now, however, it's time to leave again and head back into the forest, where we now want to follow Cal's instructions from the last episode. Head north, then north again, north, and then north. Dude, seriously, I think we've fought enough guys already. 
Once again, we run into a small group of Nazi zombies along the way. And also, once again, they are quickly taken care of and we get Cartman's ass kills up to 14. That's right. Respect our authority. We can loot the two bodies and then continue heading north until we eventually make our way back out of the forest. No matter which way you go, I block you. Ah, I see you have a passport. All right, hand it over. Papers appear to be in order. Very well. I hereby grant thee access to the great nation of Canada. Open the gate. Oh, I'll do it. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so here we are in Canada, things are looking a bit differently, as the game has completely switched to more of an old school art style. And our first stop is Ottawa, where we will quickly amuse ourselves a bit in the house on the left here. Woo! Who the fuck just walks into someone's house? Up next, we now want to go into the other house on the left side, which is the money exchange. Welcome to the Bank of Canada. Oh ho, American money. The current exchange rate is 1.24 to the dollar. And here we will exchange all of our American dollars into Canadian. All right, here we are. We turned every last penny into Canadian dollars. We now have about 216 and that means it's time to go shopping. Welcome to the shop. Can I interest you in my wares? And in true completionist fashion and also while working towards an achievement, we want to purchase all the weapon and weapon strap-ons available here. On the right we have the hospital here, but there is no need for us to visit that. Instead, we can head straight past it and have our first conversation with the Prince of Canada. All hail the Prince and Princess of Canada! Hey. Well, well, what have we here? A hero from the south? Not just anyone can pass the guard at the great border. You must have beaten the odds and obtained a passport. I am the Prince of Canada, and this is my lovely wife. How can I help you? What's this? Hmm. Sorry, but I don't know what this says. I've seen this language before, but I believe it's only spoken in a specific part of Canada. I suggest you travel west of here and seek out the Earl of Winnipeg. He can tell you where in Canada they speak this freakish tongue. But I warn you, the wilderness of Canada is filled with dire wolves. You know what dire wolves are, right? They're like wolves, but they're dire. Alright, the quest has updated and we just earned enough experience points to level up for the last time. We are now at level 15, which means we have reached the level cap in the game. So let's spend our last point to increase the damage of our Circumcise ability. And then we can make our way back out through the gift shop. Your photos with the prince and princess. Would you like two eight by tens or six five by seven? And the choice you make here does not matter whatsoever, so we'll just take the eight by tens. All right, there you go. You can exit right through there. Yeah, I would pick the five by sevens. And that's already all we can do in Ottawa for the moment. So let's leave the city again and head out into the wild. Now, since we have reached the level cap already, we don't need to pick a fight with the wolves here. Instead, we can head straight up to the spider web. Introducing the Barking Spider, the last animal we need to defeat for the big game hunting with Jimbo side quest. Now, thanks to the spider's incredibly high hit points and armor rating, the normal Sling of David fart combo will not work to take it down, so instead we'll start things off with the Plagues of Egypt this time. Not only does that inflict a bit of damage, but it also strips away a considerable amount of armor, leaving the spider extremely vulnerable for Cartman to take it down. Alright, so that is the Barking Spider taken care of and we receive the Barbarian Gloves as loot. Once again, we will avoid any potential fights while we make our way over to the treasure chest on the small island here, simply because the loot won't be spectacular and we don't really need the experience points. There is a dire wolf in front of Winnipeg, however, and the game wants us to go there, so this is a fight that we can't really get around. This looks like a job for the Grand Wizard and his trusty sidekick. 
Our strategy for this fight will be the same as it is against Nazi zombies. We start things off with the Sling of David, which hits both enemies for high damage, and then Cartman and his behind can get kills number 15 and 16. And with the direwolves out of the way, we can now help ourselves to their remains and then make our way into Winnipeg. Welcome to Winnipeg. This is a conservative township, so mind your P's and Q's. Do whatever you want with your T's and N's, however. Welcome to the shop. Can I interest you in my wares? And just like back in Ottawa, we'll start things off with a bit of shopping, as we once again purchase all available weapons and weapon strap-ons. And before we then continue to meet with the Earl, we can quickly investigate a bit of a scene here. This poor citizen was killed by a dire bear. You know what a dire bear is, right? It's like a bear, but it's dire. Alright, and with that bit of information, we can now talk to the Earl of Winnipeg. Ah, yes. This writing is definitely Canadian. But why should I help a foreigner when Winnipeg is completely overrun with dire bears? Tell you what, kill off all the dire bears in the north of town, and I'll help you however I can. Alright, a very straightforward request here. The Earl wants us to take care of the dire bears, and luckily we don't have to travel far to find them. Come at me, bruh. Now there are three dire bears against us here, which means we cannot use the Sling of David, which will only hit two of them. So instead we'll go with the Plagues of Egypt, which will damage them enough, but very important, leave them alive. And now Cartman can take care of the rest and get himself kills number 17, 18, and 19. Get the budget. And here we are. Apart from the Diabeb held, we can also get a bit of cash from the body. And once we have everything, we can return to the Earl. By Jove, you've done it! Look at all these Diabeb pelts! Now I can finally make a diorome. All right, give me that document. Mm, yes. This is actually written in the language of Eastern Canadian. The Minister of Montreal can translate it. But I'm afraid the Prince has imprisoned the Minister of Montreal in the caverns of Quebec. I will speak with the Prince. Return to him and he should let you speak with the Minister. Boy, oh boy, I will have the most diorome in all of Canada. So once again, the quest has updated and we also made a friend along the way. And following the Earl's instructions, our next stop is once again Ottawa, where we will have to ask the Prince to release the Prime Minister of Montreal. There you are! I understand you wish me to release the Minister of Montreal! I'd like to help you, but I think this might be another ploy by the Bishop of Banff to have Montreal allowed back into the kingdom. Some Canadians think our nation should be united again, my lord. Shut up! Who the fuck are you? Listen, it's all because the Bishop of Banff is a liberal. He does these things just to make life difficult for me. I must ask you to perform another noble quest. Go to Banff and kill the Bishop. <gasps> kill the Bishop of Banff? Shh, you, shh. Kill the Bishop of Banff for me and bring me his balls as proof. Do this, and I shall allow you into the catacombs of Quebec. Make haste! Alright, it seems like things are taking a turn for the cruel here. After only taking care of dire wolves and dire bass so far, our next target is now the Bishop of Banff. Well, we don't really have any other choice but to make our way over to Banff. However, once again, the path is blocked. Now, as you can see, I let the snakes attack first here, and we're also not going to block the first attack, because we want to get Dire Aids. Now, we could cure that in the hospital back in Ottawa, but there is actually an achievement for finishing the game while having it, so for the rest of the game, we simply have to live with it. Don't worry though, we won't notice it outside of combat. Dude, you got dire aids. Speaking of combat, with the two kills that Cartman just got us, we are now up to 21 kills with his ass, and that is one more than the 20 that are needed to unlock the Ass of Fire achievement. 
Welcome to the shop. Can I interest you in my wares? In Banff, we then once again start things off with a bit of shopping. However, we sadly don't have enough money left to purchase the entire bishop outfit. We would need about five more Canadian dollars to buy all the three pieces here, so instead we'll just leave them be for now and hold on to our cash. Inside of the church, we want to head to the left side first, where we can smash a big pot standing on top of a pressure plate. If we stand on it ourselves, we open up a door on the other side of the church, so let's quickly head over there and obtain a few more valuables. Now, however, I think it's time to attack the bishop. What's this? Who the fuck hits a bishop? Assassin! Now, I haven't really found a way to take out the bishop in one go, so we'll have to make it two rounds this time. We once again begin the fight with the plagues of Egypt. Not only will this weaken him, but also strengthen our attacks for the next few rounds. So Cartman's follow-up attack already does a sizable amount of damage. Not quite enough damage, however, to take out the bishop, who quickly heals himself using the communion ability here. But now it's our turn again, and that means the fight is about to end in a few seconds. Remember the golden rule. Baby bones, dribble set, lame oh, heavy bows, the janet, stick, piece of crap, not very cute, stay, fuck you, I come. Okay, okay, whoa, 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 please, you don't have to kill me. I'll go away and the prince will never know I'm alive. Please, take these dire pig testicles and tell the prince they're mine. Now, very important here, we don't want to kill the bishop, because otherwise we couldn't get a friend request from him. So in order to befriend all available people in the game, we have no other choice but to take the testicles here. Bless you, my son. It'll be our secret. Wow, good thing I saved these. Oh, come on, dude, we should take his bars anyway, so we have extra. Alright, perfect. With the testicles, we could now return to Ottawa, but we want to make one more quick stop at the shop. Welcome to the shop. Can I interest you in my wares? Because after killing the bishop, the dire scepter has now become available for sale, and we have just enough money to purchase it. This now adds one more weapon to the collection, and that concludes our business in Banff for the time being, so let's travel back to Ottawa and speak to the prince once more. Now religion won't interfere with government. How can we ever repay you? You said you would free the minister of Montreal, my lord. Sorry, no can do. With both the bishop and the minister taken care of, my throne is secure. But my liege, we made a promise. Shh, you. Shh. Quickly, you must speak with the Duke of Vancouver. He can help you get into the catacombs of Quebec. Give the Duke this. Hurry now. Alright, the Prince of Canada did not stick to his word, but at least he sent us a friend request. And thanks to the princess, we also still have hopes of meeting the Minister of Montreal, as we just received a letter from her to deliver to the Duke of Vancouver. So, that is going to be our next stop. Let's head out. Now, there are a few houses here in Vancouver that don't really give us anything, and with our funds depleted, we also don't need to visit the shop. Instead, we can make our way straight into the Duke's house. Yes, yes, I know. But Ottawa is clear on the other side of Canada. How are we supposed to get there? Once again, though, we loot before we talk. Uh -huh. Yes, I see. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. Yes, come on. Yes, I hate that guy, too. Uh -huh. No, I haven't seen that show as a kid. A letter from the princess? What the... Why, according to this, the prince had something to do with the bishop's murder and has imprisoned the minister unjustly. Young man, if you wish to brave the catacombs of Quebec, you would have to speak with the monks who live to the southeast of town. Only they could train you in such sorcery. And here we are, another friend made, and the duke just told us about a group of monks living to the southeast of town. And since they seem to be the only way to eventually free the minister of Montreal, I would say let's pay them a visit. American everyone is talking about, Terrence. Nah, it can't be. He can't be a master of spell cup. He doesn't even know magic. He probably doesn't even know how to fart. Sweet. He knows dragon shout. Any magician's apprentice can dragon shout. It's not like he farted into his hand and hit you in the face with it, Philip. <laughs> oh, God, he can cup a spell. If he's really good, how come he can't sneak a fart behind your fares? 
<laughs> the sneaky squeaker! Very impressive. He is worthy of our training after all. Yes. Prepare thyself, child. It is time for you to learn some true magic. Your magic is impressive, young American. Not since Eric von Thunderpants of Nova Scotia have we seen such prowess. But now, you must learn to control your anus muscles in just the right way to change a spell's frequency. Some objects seem too large to be damaged by magic, but now I will break through it with Nagasaki! Here, watch again. from Alberta will have their way with you unless you damage them all with one move. Nagasaki! Alright, that was the inevitable cameo from Terence and Philip, who just taught us the fourth and last available fart ability in the game, the Nagasaki. And equipped with that knowledge, we now set out for the catacombs of Quebec. And just a quick hint at this point, if you want to save yourself some trouble, make sure to have at least one summon available at this point. Alright, we have arrived and the Prime Minister is indeed where he's supposed to be. However, we first need to use our newly learned Nagasaki ability to clear the way towards him. Someday I will teach you to do better. With the obstacle out of the way, we're not in the clear though, because up next we're in for a tough fight. To victory! Now, I'm not saying this fight is impossible to win, but it's just so much easier if you use a summon. So I'd say let's summon Jesus up to Canada and see if he can't yes, help out. Lock and load. Dude, you got diarrhea. Wonderful. We just avoided a long and tedious fight and can now jump straight to the also somewhat tedious looting process, as our enemies' corpses are unfortunately all cluttered closely together. Before we then interact with the Minister of Montreal, we first want to grab the contents of the chest in the upper left corner, which among other things gives us the barbarian armor. And then, and this is very important, we want to fart on him before starting the conversation. <laughs> because with that, we have now farted on the Mayor, Father Maxi, Principal Vic and the Prime Minister, and that unlocks the Truth to Power achievement. Je suis libre. Je suis libre. Oh. All right, with friend requests from the minister and the princess, we are now up to 100 friends, so let's quickly select our last perk. And I have decided to go with Dirty Fighting, which allows us to inflict more damage to grossed out enemies. Lovely, we finally have what we came for, a translation of the abortion clinic records, and I suppose the girls will be very eager to get their hands on that translation. Now the way back to South Park is easy enough, we were heading straight north to get to Canada, so we can simply go straight south to get back. We then re-enter South Park in the northeast of town, near the farm, and from here we can make our way over to the nearest fast travel point, which is in front of the U storage storage facility. And using that fast travel point, we will now once again travel over to the Tower of Peace, from where we can quickly head back over to City Hall and have any take us back to the girls. Ready to go back? The girls are ready to see you. 
See, right here it says that five women were at the clinic that day. And right there it says Nancy Turner, 3.30 p.m. That's Heidi's mom! So Heidi Turner was the two-faced bitch! The evidence is irrefutable. Thanks, new kid. We now know it was Heidi Turner all along who was spreading the rumors. Freaking whore! Two-faced butt rag! Fuck Heidi Turner and her fucking two-faced ass! But Heidi's really sorry, so we're deciding to forgive her. I love you guys so much. We love you too, Heidi. Yay! 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 You served us well, new kid. So you have our services. Tell the boys we will play their game. Sparkle! Sunshine! All right, I would say our trip to Canada definitely paid off because we have now finally recruited the girls. Now, there are a few small things that we want to take care of before heading back to the Elven Kingdom, but I think we can leave those for the next episode. For today, I would of course be happy if you could give the video a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel, then of course feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!